The returns on startup investments have averaged 12% over the last two decades, more than double the return on the world stock index. But that's not why I'm saying this type of private equity investing will make you rich. In this video, I'll reveal the true secret behind startup investing that makes you money and three private company investments I'm watching right now. At first though, because there was some confusion in our last video, remember most startup investing sites are only open to accredited investors. Now that might change in the future, but another reason why I wanted to talk about this now, for all of you that are sitting there thinking this just doesn't apply to you, folks, people are reaching that millionaire status like never before. More than a million new millionaires were created in the US in 2020 alone. From the value of your investments to a side business, this channel is all about helping you reach that seven figure bank account. And I love talking about these types of investments that get you there even faster. So stick around because no other investment has created as many millionaires and even billionaires as private equity. In fact, more than 25 billionaires on the Forbes list are there because of these types of startup investments with a combined net worth over $150 billion. Throughout the video, we'll see how startup investing produces those higher returns. For example, topping the Forbes list of private equity investors, Steven Schwartzman nearly doubled his fortune to $37.4 billion in 2021 alone. We're getting started, but first, you know I've gotta send that special shout out to all you out there in the Bowtie Nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. All the startup investments I'll talk about in the video can be found on the Disraptor app, a private equity investing app that makes pre-IPO investing affordable and easy, investing as little as $1,000 in a company. You can invest in private tech companies just as easily as buying a share of stock. Analysts narrow deals down to only the best companies at that pre-IPO stage and show you the details like market opportunity, business model, and risks to each investment. You can make your investment and track the portfolio of companies right on the app. Previous investments on Disraptor include Airbnb, Palantir, and Lemonade, which saw a 172% exit for investors before the IPO. And the app is just now closing up its investment window in Elon Musk's SpaceX, so make sure you check that out. In fact, the first startup investment I'm watching is one that could be coming up soon on the app, buy now, pay later app Klarna. The company has built to more than 85 million users since 2005 and is accepted at more than 200,000 retailers. Now, buy now, pay later is the biggest thing in fintech right now with 23% of consumers in Europe using it and the market expected to reach $4 trillion by 2030. And Klarna is growing revenue at 40% a year and management has targeted the next few years for an IPO, but a buyout is always possibility as well with these startup investments. PayPal acquired Japanese BNPL firm Payday for $2.7 billion and and Block closed its $39 billion acquisition of Afterpay earlier this year. The Australian startup raised $448 million from investors in three private funding rounds, investors that were made very, very rich on that buyout. But that higher return on startup investing isn't how it's gonna make you rich. Yes, the 12.2% annual return over the last 20 years is double the return on the world stock index, and that difference alone would have added more than a million dollars to your portfolio if you were investing 5,000 a year in private equity versus stocks over the last 30 year period. More than that higher returns though, is the potential for these private equity investments to protect you in a stock market crash. This is a study of the correlation between a seed stage portfolio and the returns on the NASDAQ stock index. And I know this is only exciting to the nerds like myself, but this shows the returns do not move together, that the returns on private equity investments do not depend on a rising stock market. The blue line here, moving from slightly positive to slightly negative, means the stock market has little effect on those startup returns. And that means when your growth stocks in the NASDAQ plunge like they have this year, your private company investments can continue to produce those returns. Now that's more important than most investors realize and is really the true secret to how startup investing will make you rich. Because let me ask you a question here. Have you ever bought a stock sure that it was gonna be a great investment, but only to see it start falling. Did you freak out just a little? Have you ever sold a stock after the price went down only to see it bounce back higher after you sold it? Nation, sometimes as investors, we are our own worst enemies. We make all those bad investing decisions based on emotions like fear and panic and, and it always comes back to bite us every single time. If you had just held on to that stock instead of panic selling, how much more money would you have had? And so this is how having some of your money in those startup investments will make you rich. 
First, since there's usually a lockup period of a year or more on these, it keeps you from trading in and out. That's something we talk about in our penny stocks videos as well, but you have got to give these companies time to grow and prove that upside potential. Also though, and this is gonna help your entire portfolio, but because you now have part of your wealth in something that doesn't move up and down with stocks, your overall portfolio return is gonna be much smoother. And this means when stocks do crash 20 or 30% in six months, you're not freaking out over your portfolio because you still have part of it that is performing. Your overall average portfolio return doesn't look so bad and you're not wondering how ramen noodles five times a week is gonna taste. That is gonna help you keep to your investing plans instead of freaking out so, so you enjoy those long-term returns that will make you rich. I'll walk you through the basics of startup investing and how to get started, but the second investment I'm watching is battery charging startup StoreDot with an $880 million valuation and $13.20 per share in a deal open until September 28th. StoreDot has found an innovative way to replace graphite in lithium batteries with silicon nanoparticles increasing the charging speed for electric vehicles, drones, and the smartphones it's tested. In fact, it's already proven the concept with a battery that recharges a smartphone in just 30 seconds and the first battery to recharge an electric vehicle in five minutes last year. It's targeting mass production in 2024. The company has already raised $148 million in five previous rounds from British Petroleum, Daimler AG, and Samsung. But now I do wanna make sure you know what you're getting here with these startup investments. This is a very high risk, high return part of the market. So I wanna walk you through the basics, including the pros and the cons, as well as how to get started. Startup investing is just investing in newer, smaller companies that aren't yet ready to issue stock on the public market. So they'll go to companies or firms like Google Ventures and Peter Thiel to get funding until they're ready to IPO. Now, sometimes also called private equity or angel investing, it's this early stage funding that helps new companies grow to that point where they can either sell shares in an IPO or attract a buyout from a larger company. And I should clarify, while I'm using kind of a blanket term of startup investing to describe all these pre-IPO investments, there is a big difference in the actual life cycle of a company. A completely new company it might apply for seed funding, and this might even be before there's a finished product. From there, companies can go through several rounds of funding to keep that growth momentum until they're ready for that final round of bridge financing before they go public. So if you see some of these deals or companies with significant revenue already, that's generally one of those later stages of funding and much less risky than the seed or other types of that startup investing. The pros of startup investing are obviously the higher potential returns. Peter Thiel cashed out more than $2 billion a 4,000% return as one of the first private investors in Facebook, and we've already seen how many of the world's billionaires use this strategy. More than that, just being able to smooth out your portfolio returns with an investment that doesn't crash and burn with stocks is a great addition to your investments. Cons of startup investing, though, are that lockup period, usually from one to three years before you can sell your investment, and sometimes even longer. It's not usually a problem because you really do need to give these companies time to grow anyway, but, but there is always lower liquidity. The biggest drawback though is the failure rate. In a study of more than 3,000 angel investments, more than a third, 35% returned less than the original investment. That's the bar on the far left here, returning less than 1x the investment. And, and while the overall portfolio return was 27% a year, you have got to be ready for some of your startup investments to fail. That's just how this type of investment works, folks. You invest in five or 15 companies, expecting half of them to fail or just barely return your money on the idea that just a few of them are gonna produce that 10 to 20X return on average and average out to that double digit portfolio return. Now, the way you make money on all this, the way you make money on startup investments is through what's called an exit. Now, this is when the company is either bought out by another or issues shares in an IPO. Now at that point, you either get a cash return from the acquisition or shares that you can sell like any other stock. And again, those returns can be very strong, even in a bear market for stocks. Investors made 133% return on Palantir while stock investors are just breaking even. It's right here that Lemonade investors made 172% return on their money, while the stock investors are still down 72% since the IPO just two years ago. And that's why financial advisors are increasingly recommending startup and private equity investments to their clients. In a recent survey by Cerulli Associates of 100 advisors during the first half of 2022, they found the average alt assets allocation of 14.5%, but with a target of 17.5 over the next two years. The top reason given by 70% of the respondents was to reduce exposure to the stock market, followed by 66% of advisors said they wanna increase downside risk protection. In a future video, I'll review different startup investing platforms and how to analyze these deals, but now I wanna reveal one more investment I'm watching, 
Bowery and a deal open until September 20th for $55 a share and a $2.3 billion valuation. Bowery is already the largest US producer in leafy greens in that vertical farming space, so it's already further along than most of the startup investments you'll see. Its produce is sold in 850 grocery stores across the nation, including Walmart, Whole Foods, and Stop and Shop. Vertical farming can operate 365 days a year and yield 100 times more than a traditional farm per acre on 75% less water consumption. Annual growth is expected at 22% to a $13 billion market by 2026, and the future could be even stronger internationally where arable land and that water isn't quite as available. To date, Bowery has raised over $472 million from investors like Fidelity Management, Google Ventures, and Tomasek, including celebrities like Natalie Portman and Justin Timberlake. Now, each of these startup investments has specific risks, so make sure you check those out on the Disruptor app to see the risks and the details on each one. Check out the Disruptor app with the link below and see how to invest in startups like Klarna or click on the video to the right for the five short-term investments I'm watching right now. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.